Officially, today's topic is supposed to be buffers. Before we do that, I just want to say a quick word about salt solutions. Um, there have been a couple of questions people have had from the UT Quest. Um, the example problem that I posted, the video with the weak base, is also an example of a salt solution. Um, to solve the salt solution problems, you basically just need to remember a couple of simple solubility rules and what happens when an ionic compound dissolves. When an ionic compound dissolves, it also dissociates. It breaks apart into its ions. We're basically going to have two categories of salts. We're going to have alkali metals plus weak bases. So KF is a great example of an alkali metal plus a weak base. NaCN is an alkali metal plus a weak base. The, the alkali metal ion gets this in the solution, but the thing that actually matters in terms of the acids and bases is that this basically turns into F minus, and this turns into CS, CN minus. <clears throat> we can do this with all sorts of other weak bases. It's, there's nothing special about F minus and CN minus. Um, so when that's the case, it's going to be just like the one that you had in the, um, in the video, which is you'll draw an ice table with these bases reacting with water to make their conjugate acids and OH minus. If you're given the H, the Ka for the acid, you need to remember that Kw is also equal to Ka times Kb if you need a Kb value for a conjugate base. So there are a couple of things to keep in mind here. But the most important concept is the first one, which is that Kf is not really Kf. Kf is potassium ions and fluoride ions. The potassium ions don't do anything, so the fluoride ions are what we care about. <clears throat> the other way we'll see this sometimes is a weak acid plus a halogen that's not F. So, for example, ammonium chloride or other um, protonated amines, basically, is what they are. They're going to have N's and a bunch of H's and then a Cl or a Br or something at the end. Um, and when these dissociate, the, the halogens act basically in the same way the alkali metals did before. And what this really is, is the ammonium ion, which is going to act as a weak acid. So the salt solutions aren't really that different from the weak acid and base solutions. You just have to remember how ionic compounds work and how dissociation works. All right. The last topic that will be on your quiz um, and since I'm posting this video on Wednesday and your quiz is on Thursday, I'm going to make that quiz open note. So whatever notes you've taken watching these videos, um, whatever practice problems you've worked on paper from the UT Quest or from the videos, you can use all of that um, when you are working on your quiz. All right, um, buffer solutions. A buffer is a mixture of a weak acid, and its conjugate base. The reason we care about buffers is that buffers resist a change in pH. We'll talk next week as we're talking about titrations, about exactly how it is that a buffer resists a change in pH. For right now, you need to know that a buffer is a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, and you need to know that it resists a change in pH. So let's take a mixture of HF and KF. <clears throat> let's do this, the, um, the solutions we were talking about earlier, basically. Let's make our HF concentration 0 0.100 molar, and our KF concentration 0 0.150 molar. If we think about what we have in solution here, what we really have in solution is HF. HF is a weak acid. It's not going to dissociate for the most part. And then we have K plus, and we have F minus, because the potassium fluoride is going to dissociate because the K plus is an alkaline metal. So the things in this solution that matter in terms of acid-base properties are the HF and the F minus. We're trying to figure out how much of that we're going to have at equilibrium, and we're going to try to figure out what the pH of the solution is. So we're going to write the acid reaction for HF. HF plus H2O 
HF is going to act as an acid, which means that it will donate a proton to the H3O, to H2O to make it H3O plus. And what's left behind will be the fluoride. So we can set this up with an ice table, just like we always do. We'll set this up like an ice table, our initial concentration of HF, the problem told us was 0.1. We don't consider water because water is a pure liquid. We want to be careful though. We have an initial concentration of F minus. The initial concentration of the KF is our concentration of F minus. We will still consider the initial concentration of the acid to be zero. So which way will this reaction shift to reach equilibrium? This reaction is going to shift to the right. It has to shift toward a zero. It can't shift away from that H3O plus because there isn't any of it. So if it shifts to the right, our change in the HF is going to be negative X and then plus X, plus X on the right-hand side. We have 0.1 minus X, X. And be careful here because what we have is 0.15 plus X. We're going to write our K expression. Ka is going to be equal to x times 0.15 plus x divided by 0.1 minus x. But x is going to be small. x is going to be small because this is a weak acid. x is going to be even smaller because we have some base. So you can imagine that this reaction is not going to shift as far to the right as it would if we had zeros on both sides over there. So because that's the case, we can neglect both of these x's, both the plus x in the numerator and the minus x in the denominator, and end up with the Ka is equal to 0.15 over 0.1 times x. x is what we're looking for. We have to be given the Ka for HF, which is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to, I can go ahead and divide that 0.15 by 0.1 to get 0.015x and then divide both sides by 0.015 to find our value of x. So grab a calculator, plug that in and see what you get. And I'll do the same. 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 0 0.015 gives me x This should be 1.5. Well, okay, this is fine, but this should be 1.5. I made that mistake on purpose just to make sure you were paying attention. Sure, I did. Let's try that again. That makes more sense x is equal to 4.8 times 10 to the negative 4. So that's x. To find the pH of the solution, we're going to take minus the log of that number, which gives us pH equal to 3.32. It's, it's a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, um, and this is a relatively strong weak acid, so it makes sense that this pH would be acidic. So this process is not a terribly difficult process of taking the concentrations of the acid and the base and plugging them into your K expression. But it turns out, as long as this assumption holds, this X's can be neglected assumption holds, there is an easier equation that we can use. And I'm going to go through the derivation a little bit quickly, just because I think it's kind of a useful one to see. Um, you're not going to be responsible for this derivation, so don't worry too much about what I'm doing here. Ka is equal to concentration of H3O plus. I'm going to put in here just A minus, where A is the generic base, just some conjugate of a weak base, over 
HA. So what I've done is I've looked at that HF reaction and I've substituted in A just for whatever anion we have in this weak phase. This could be nitrite, it could be acetate, it could be cyanide, it could be many of our ions up here. So what I'm going to do now is going to be a little bit weird. I'm going to take minus the log of both sides of this equation. Minus the log of Ka equals minus the log of H3O plus A minus over HA. And now I'm going to use some log rules. Minus the log of the Ka then is going to equal minus the log. The log of A times B is equal to the log of A plus the log of B. So minus the log of H3O plus minus the log the base concentration over the acid concentration. And then minus the log of the Ka is the pKa, which is a value that we'll just find listed in textbooks. Minus the log of the H plus concentration is the pH. And there's the base concentration over the acid concentration. So this is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Um, And the reason I'm pausing, oh, okay, that's right. Because what we usually want to do is we usually want to solve this equation for the pH. Um, so the form that you'll usually find this written in is that the pH of a solution is equal to the pKa plus the log. That's what was throwing me, is I knew there should be a positive sign in front of that plus the log of the base over the acid term. It's because I hadn't finished rearranging it. There we go. So this is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. It's a really helpful equation when it comes to finding the pH of buffer solutions. We can use it any time what we're dealing with is a buffer, so we're going to have to have significant concentrations of both the weak acid and the conjugate base. Um, and we can use it as long as this is a weak acid and the 5% rule holds. So let's just plug in the numbers that we had earlier and confirm that we get the same answer. We're going to need the pKa for HF, which means we just take minus the log of the concentration, or sorry, minus the log of the Ka value. The pKa for HF is 3.14. So if we have that number, then the pH of this mixture should just be equal to 3.14 plus the log of the base concentration, 0.15, divided by the acid concentration, which is 0.1. So I plug that into my calculator. get 3.32, which I believe is exactly the same answer we had before, but I erased it before I saw it. Okay, so as fairly simple as that ice table was, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is even easier. Be a little bit careful. This is one of those dangerous equations that you can't always use, but sometimes students try to use when they all the time. You've got to have this buffer mixture. You've got to have concentrations of both a weak acid and its conjugate base, and it has to be a weak acid, which means its Ka value has to be relatively small. All right, this should take care of the last few um, problems on the UT Quest. Um, I will be available, I should be available at 2 today and at 2 tomorrow, um, and 3 o'clock tomorrow is the first time that you can request access to your quiz. All right. Um, let me know if you have any questions.